Today we have an interesting theory for Thor Love and Thunder provided by my buddies over at the Just the Nobodies podcast who you probably know off of TikTok. If you haven't heard of them already, go ahead and check out their TikTok because quite honestly, they have some pretty amazing videos where they one, entertain and two, give some awesome information about your favorite movie and TV shows. But today we're going to be talking about this theory that comes from Just the Nobodies talking about how Thor is probably going to die based off of some foreshadowing and references in the Thor Love and Thunder trailer. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Cosmic Culture, the channel where we talk all things major movie and television news, theories, breakdowns, and much, much more. I'm your host, Chris, and it really is an amazing time to be a Marvel fan or a superhero fan, a nerd, a geek, whatever you want to identify yourself as. We are in the current uprising of a new era of the MCU. Phase 4, which follows the Infinity Saga, the first three phases and first 10 or 12 years of the MCU, has really stepped out of the bounds of what we are familiar with with Marvel, giving us new products, new views, perspectives, tones, a little bit of horror, a little bit of goofy, something crazy, something dark, something scary, and then overall, something disconnected that we haven't really seen with Marvel before, as the entirety of the first saga, the Infinity Saga, followed a very specific pattern. And it was a very successful pattern. But Marvel had to do something new, and I think we're starting to see the fruits of this as Thor Love and Thunder is around the corner, and it looks like it's going to be an incredible movie, building even more so on the momentum of Thor Ragnarok. And from there, we can move into, you know, the storyline of the gods, the storyline of Olympus, the storyline of the mighty Thor, who, of course, will be Jane Foster. Now, we've heard from Taika Waititi that he's going to be following a lot of the Mighty Thor comic story and that we will be seeing a cancer ridden Jane Foster, although it hasn't been confirmed whether or not that cancer will be coming from her using Thor's powers or whether or not she'll be getting healed from Thor's power. How exactly they're planning on retconning that. However, it does seem like she goes and finds Mjolnir after it was broken by reading on some power signals. Now, after she collects it, somehow she manages to bring it back together and Mjolnir deems her worthy. However, is this the passing over of Thor to Jane? Will Jane be the Thor in the MCU? Well, originally on first appearance, I would have said, no, they're different characters. The mighty Thor isn't Thor. Thor is a character, not a title and you can't really pass that mantle over. However, here what my buddies over on Just The Nobodies had to say about what we missed in the trailer that dropped for Thor Love and Thunder. Check it out. Do you know the super sad Thor Love and Thunder theory? No. So in every trailer that Taika Waititi produces, he literally puts music, big songs in his trailers that actually foreshadow what happens in the movie, like we saw in Thor Ragnarok. And in the Thor Love and Thunder trailer, we actually see Sweet Child of Mine being played. So what does that foreshadow? So before I get into that, in the trailer, we actually see Korg talking to a bunch of kids in space, and he's telling them about Thor. And he's telling these stories about Thor, but everything he's saying is in the past tense, as if Thor is gone and no longer with them. But the song Sweet Child of Mine kind of confirms this. It was really weird how he was talking in the past tense. So in this song, Sweet Child of Mine, it's about a guy who loves a girl. And the original music video that was shot for Sweet Child of Mine was actually shot in black and white. And it looks exactly like what we see in the trailer where we see Thor and Jane like hook fingers. And then we see how they're about to fight Gore. It's like the final battle. There has to be a reason they picked that song. So in the song Sweet Child of Mine, the song goes, she's got eyes of the bluest skies. As we see in the trailer, right? When she's using the power of Thor, her eyes are blue from the thunder and lightning. And this song goes, I hate to look into those eyes and see an ounce of pain. As we know, Jane Foster will be having cancer in the movie and that's why Thor doesn't want to see her in pain then this is where it gets crazy the song goes and pray for the thunder and the rain to quietly pass me by and this song is being sung from the perspective of the guy which is Thor Thor is literally saying that he wants the thunder and the rain to pass him by he no longer wants to be a part of his powers he doesn't want him anymore he wants Jane to take it over because Thor knows that Jane needs the power of Thor to be able to live in order to survive cancer so for the final time, I just want to thank Ryan and Daniel over at Just The Nobodies. Check them out on TikTok, guys. They really are fantastic. I'll leave a link in the description down below. But they really do raise so many awesome points in this short little video that they posted, where they're talking about several different things that have happened with Thor and may happen with Thor. Namely, they talk about Korg talking in the past tense about Thor. Now, Korg is Thor's best friend right now. He just really is. Loki's not around. They've been traveling. And even though Thor's been hanging out with the Guardians of the Galaxy, it doesn't look like he's mixed well with them to the point where they're all best, best buddies. I think they've put up with Thor and they've realized he's had a huge loss in his life. But from the trailers and from even at the end of Avengers Endgame, there's always been a little bit of a struggle there. So Korg, who has been roaming around with him throughout all of this, truly has become his best friend. Who better to tell the tale of Thor 
to tell the tale of the god of the galaxy who goes around with lightning and saves all the day, to tell the story to those who maybe he protected and saved after he has passed. It would be a very interesting twist if Thor Love and Thunder is narrated by Korg. At the end of the movie we realize he's been telling the story of Thor Love and Thunder. Now they do talk about as well Sweet Child of Mine, which of course was the song that played in the trailer. Now they've used songs and lyrics in the past to try to foreshadow a little bit of what we should be expecting, especially in Thor Ragnarok. Now Thor Love and Thunder certainly follows the steps of Thor Ragnarok because that movie was a wild success for Thor and for the Marvel franchise. So it makes perfect sense that moving forward into Thor Love and Thunder, we're going to get a lot of the same vibes and a lot of the same formula. Something that Marvel Studios does very well, they realize something works, and they stick with it. That's what got us through the Infinity Saga with the plan, with the formula, with the way and the flow of the entire saga. Well, now they need something new and they need something better. However, that doesn't mean that they cannot look to the past to grow into the future. So there will definitely be a lot of similar vibage from Thor Ragnarok into Thor Love and Thunder. And you can definitely see as well that Taika Waititi has adapted a lot of James Gunn into Thor Love and Thunder as well, which I think is really exciting. James Gunn and Taika Waititi are some of the coolest, most outlandish and unique directors really directing anything right now, and I'm really excited to see maybe a little bit of a mind collaboration and Taika Waititi really leaning on what he's learned from James Gunn. But let's talk about Jane now. Now in the comics, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Jane gets cancer. Now in the comics, this cancer is actually not a result of her turning into Thor, but her turning into Thor momentarily heals her cancer, but it also washes away her chemo. So it's kind of killing her to become Thor, but it's also kind of saving her. It's a very, very mixed bag, two sides of the coin kind of situation. Now, however they end up doing it in the movie, I do not think it is going to perfectly follow the comics. And it's very possible that we will see that she needs to remain Lady Thor, she needs to remain the Mighty Thor in order to survive her cancer. And that the hammer, Mjolnir, is actually trying to save her because she's a good soul, she's a good person, and that's why she's able to wield it in the first place. She's worthy, she's capable of possessing these powers that have given her the ability to be Almighty Thor. Now the boys over at Just the Nobodies propose an idea that I think is rather interesting. Thor might have to give up his powers in order to save Jane. We hearing that Thor's a little bit lost right now. He doesn't know what he wants to be. He's turned down the kingdom of Asgard because he wants to go and be a hero. He doesn't want to be a ruler. He has gone off with the Guardians of the Galaxy and eventually that ends up coming to an end. He goes into his meditation phase at a big tree. And this is the same big tree that we see behind Korg when he is telling the story of the God of Thunder. Maybe he will have an opportunity to denounce his powers, give them to Jane in order to save her, and then he can have one, his love, two, some type of purpose, and three, he can move on beyond being a hero. I didn't originally believe, and I don't know that I still do, that this is the end of Thor. He has his own hammer, he has his own storyline, and Jane clearly has powers regardless of what Thor has, which makes perfect sense as Thor isn't a title, it is a person. So Lady Thor, who possesses similar powers to Thor, does have her own powers, her own abilities, and she was chosen by the Hammer regardless of Thor. It just so happens that they were dating, and that's kind of one of the mysteries of the cosmos things, but I don't think her powers are reliant on Thor's. That being said, it does seem a little bit like from what we're seeing in the trailer and from past foreshadowing and different clues we have that Thor might be in trouble here. And we could be set up for some pretty devastating news when we do finally watch Thor Love and Thunder. But let me know what you guys think about this theory specifically. It does sound like potentially something you could be seeing when the movie releases, so maybe you need to brace yourself a little bit for the end of Thor, and that mantle being passed over to the mighty Thor, who will use the abilities of Thor in order to save herself from cancer, changing the story from the comics a little bit, but again, that's not anything new for Marvel Studios. They receive inspiration from the comics and very, very often and frequently, leave the main storyline and create something new so we can have fresh material and content to enjoy. But I really like this theory and I definitely thought it was worth mentioning. The end of Thor could be actually coming our way in Thor Love and Thunder, even though I desperately hope that that's not the case and we'll be seeing another trilogy from Chris Hemsworth as Thor. But let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you guys so much for watching till the very end of the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our major movie and television news updates happening daily right here on Cosmic Culture.